Essentially, what do you know that we don't know? Essentially, what we know is that uh, we have a vaccine that has a good chance to work. It has, it uses a technology, uh, the so-called adenovirus modified the technology that uh, has been validated already before with other vaccines. So we know a lot about it. We have, uh, with this uh, uh, new COVID uh, vaccine, we also have animal data. We, have now, we, are, we are now accumulating data in 1,000 patients in the UK. So we think there's a good chance. Of course, it may fail, but there's a good chance it will work. And essentially, the administration is saying, we're going to make a bet. The only way to get a vaccine ready for patients in September, October, is to start manufacturing now and do it in parallel to the clinical program. And of course, if the, the, the vaccine doesn't work, then this will be wasted. But if the vaccine work, work then basically the patients, people can be uh, vaccinated immediately. Now, you've got this huge investment from the United States. You have a smaller investment here from the UK. Who gets that, the vaccines first? How is that allocated? Well, actually, the UK is uh, doing a similar investment on a per vaccine basis. It just happens that the UK has a different model. It pays as we go. And the, what the, the amount of money they have declared is the amount of money for the next uh, payment, if you will. But to get to the, uh, the, uh, the number of doses they've ordered, they will have to pay more than the 65 million. So it's, uh, it's only the first payment, if you will. So that's one, uh, one point. And the other point is, there will be no competition between geographies and countries because we are establishing separate independent supply chains. We have one for the US, for US citizen, it is citizens only. We have one for the UK. We have one for Europe and the rest of the world. And we're working on one for India, big country, of course, and one for China because uh, it, it is also specific. So there will be no competition uh, and certainly no competition due to finances. I'm sure that you have a more privileged insight than most to the progress at Oxford University. What can you tell us about how things are going there? Well, things are going well. I mean, I want to be, uh, I want to be uh, candid. I mean, this vaccine may not work, right? I mean, there's no guarantee it will work. Um, but having said that, everything we see goes in the right direction, and all the data we've uh, you know, are very supportive. We are running a phase one, two study, as I said, with about 1,000 patients in the UK. We'll get the final results at the end of this month, early June. And on the back of this, we will start our phase three program, which will include 10,000 patients in the UK. We also have a phase three study uh, that will start in July in the United States in 30,000 patients. So we will be accumulating a lot of clinical data. And so far, so good. And, and just how quickly, I mean, for somebody with your experience, you've never seen anything move this quickly. I can tell you, I mean, you know, I have never seen anything move that fast. I mean, you know, we always smile to say governments are not very fast, but I can tell you the, uh, of course, secretaries are, but the whole the leadership of BARDA, the FDA, the NIH, everybody has been incredibly committed. We had meetings during weekends on Saturday, on Sunday. Uh, there was an incredible commitment to make this happen very, very quickly. This is really, you know, I mean, I've never seen something like this. So a tremendous commitment. And essentially, why? Because simply people had in mind warp speed. We have to move quickly. It's a question of getting these vaccines to the American people as quickly as possible. So it's been really a fantastic uh, experience. Americans and people all over the world are so desperate for an answer, for a reason to hope. Is this a reason? Look, my, my mother is 92. She lives by herself. She's too far. I can't go see her because uh, the distance forgives me to go. My brother lives very near to her, but he's a hospital physician. He doesn't go see her because he, he worries about infecting her. This is not life. This is not a real life. We have to change this. And I'm not even talking about the millions of people who've lost their jobs. We have to restart the economy and we have to be able to go back to a normal life, not worry about going to a restaurant and mixing with people, not worry about visiting our parents. This is, this is we need a solution to this. And it's a bet, but it's a bet worth taking. I think it is a bet worth taking. And then when you see the economic impact 
and the medical impact of this disease, I think the, the, the investment that is made in this vaccine is absolutely worth it. Uh, 